Welcome to WOW! I never knew that! The show that answers life's little questions. Hello, I'm JJ. WOW! I never knew that is jam-packed with exciting tidbits and fascinating facts that uncover the truths and origins behind the stuff you're already familiar with. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Ah, uh, Houston, I forgot my lines. The Eagle landed on the moon on July 20th, 1969, when over 500 million people watched as Apollo 11's astronaut Neil Armstrong became the first man on the moon. When Armstrong stepped foot on the lunar surface, he said, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Only problem, these were not the scripted lines he had prepared. It turns out, Armstrong was supposed to say, that's one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. The A somehow went missing. Since the recording equipment and technology at the time wasn't as good as it is today, it's hard to distinguish if in fact the A was spoken. After years of debate, Armstrong has suggested that perhaps he did mess up his lines. Watch out, it's coming right at you! Conceived on the battlefields, shrapnel were fragments from a thrown or fired type of mini-bomb that was meant to kill, injure, or disfigure people. Yeah, this scattering projectile is no laughing matter. Each hollow shell originally contained a bunch of lead bullets and an explosive charge inside a steel case. Soldiers would take these devices and throw them or shoot them off in cannons with each one exploding in midair, causing the lead bullets to shower the enemy with dangerous missiles. The shell case itself became many projectiles, as it too was shattered into little pieces. The man who invented this device was British soldier, General Henry Shrapnel. No baseball uniform would be complete without a baseball cap. So. I am going to advise you on its origin. It was 1849 when the New York Knickerbockers first wore a hat made of straw. Then, in 1860, the Brooklyn Excelsiors wore a cap that had a rounded top. But it wasn't until 1900 when the hats similar to the ones we know today started to become popular. The secret to this particular hat was that the bill or brim protected the player's eyes from the sun, making it possible to look into the sky and still see the ball. Today, virtually everyone has worn a baseball cap, whether playing baseball or not. Sexy women on the beach. They look that way partly because of the alluring outfits they wear, especially those attractive bathing suits, also known as a bikini. But where did the bikini name come from? The answer is atomic. First off, the small two-piece bathing suit dates back to around 1400 BC to ancient Rome. It then evolved to a one-piece bathing suit in 1907. But it was the war in the 1940s that caused more skin to be exposed. The US government wanted manufacturers to reduce the fabrics they use. But it wasn't until 1946 when the French engineer Louis Riard made the modern debut of what we now know today. His version of the swimsuit had a lot less fabric than what was common at the time. He thought his idea was explosive. So what could he call his new invention? He needed a name with a bang. And as luck would have it, the United States government recently conducted tests of the atomic bomb at Bikini Atoll an island among a bunch of other islands in the South Pacific. Those tests were highly charged in the public's eye, and that's exactly the attention he wanted. So, he borrowed the name of the island, and the bikini was born. His suits then mushroomed in popularity all over the world. On a hot summer's day, 
nothing refreshes like creamy, sweet ice cream in a cone. The cone is half the treat. But where did this crispy cone come from? Edible cones date back to 1825, when they were mentioned in French cookbooks. However, it wasn't until 1904 that they really rolled their way into the American psyche. You see, it was during the St. Louis World Fair when an ice cream vendor ran out of ice cream bowls to sell his ice cream. So, he partnered with a neighboring waffle stand and then rolled waffles into cones to then fill and top with ice cream. The edible waffle cone has rolled into our bellies ever since. The term Wi-Fi is a trademark of the Wi-Fi Alliance and is the brand name for products using the IEEE 802.11 family of standards. The term Wi-Fi was first used commercially in August 1999 after being coined by a brand consulting firm called Interbrand Corporation that the Alliance had hired to determine a name that was a little easier to remember than IEEE 802.11. Interbrand invented Wi-Fi as a play on words for Hi-Fi, which was a long-established audio equipment classification term used since 1950. Hi-Fi was short for high fidelity, so they thought Wi-Fi would be a good name for wireless fidelity. Nothing sparkles quite like a diamond. Now, learn how these sparklers are created from years of heat and pressure. A girl's best friend, diamonds. They are valued as one of the most precious stones on earth. But do you know how they're created? A misconception is they are formed from coal. But it turns out coal rarely has a role in the formation of diamonds. Geologists believe that the diamonds in all of Earth's commercial diamond deposits were formed by natural carbon in the mantle of Earth, about 100 miles below the Earth's surface. Almost 500,000 pounds of pressure per square inch is needed to compress carbon into diamond, and that must take place at temperatures ranging from about 800 to 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Then, after about a billion years, they were delivered to the surface through a type of underground volcanic pipes. Today, most diamonds are found in Australia, Brazil, Russia, South Africa, and Zaire. Diamonds, a real hidden gem. Are you ready for some jiggling information? Gelatin desserts have become a famous dessert around the world. But what if I was to tell you that they are made from animal parts? It turns out they are an important step in the process of making the jiggling treat. You see, skin, cartilage, and bone are removed and then boiled and then soaked and filtered. Then the extract dries to a powder, which will then be mixed with sugar, artificial flavoring, food dye, and a few other ingredients to form the dessert that we all know and love. You'll never look at the Jiggle Wiggle the same way again. Bingo! Have you ever played this fun and addicting game? So, how did this game of chance get its start? Well, one day in 1929, a New York toy salesman came across a county fair in Jacksonville, Georgia. He had been traveling across the country selling his wares. As he walked through the arcade and amusement area, he stumbled upon a game packed with people having a good old time. They were playing a game called Beano. It consisted of a hawker calling out numbers that he drew from a small box. Then the players would look at their playing card for that number. Their cards had five numbers horizontally and five numbers vertically. If they had the number called, they'd place a bean on the spot. Whoever covered an entire row won. And to stop the play and announce they had a winning card, the player would yell, Beano! Thinking this was a great game, the toy salesman made a set of the game to play with his friends in his home back in New York. Sure enough, they loved it. And during one game, one of the players got so excited that she accidentally yelled out, Bingo! when she hit all the numbers. Bingo! The new name has stuck ever since.